Have you noticed that the price of your groceries has gone up? Bread, milk, cheese, eggs are all more expensive and it's something we're seeing throughout most of the globe. Because here's the thing, so we saw the inflation report yesterday and yeah, it, you know, inflation is slowing, which is good news, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't feel like that to you. It's no secret that the cost of living is on the rise. From the price you pay at the pump to the checkout counter, the sticker shock has gotten more and more severe. And I've spoken time and time again about how now that I'm an American who now lives abroad, well, once you get that outside perspective looking in, America can sometimes feel like you're living in a bubble. And inflation is one of those topics that, especially for the last couple of years, has really illustrated this phenomenon. Because here's the thing, rising gas prices, the cost of electricity, or just the cost of bacon, eggs, and milk at the grocery store, well, it's a global phenomenon. We are all feeling the pinch. Yet when I scroll through Facebook or watch the news and American friends and family, I preface this next statement with lots and lots of love, but there seems to be this underlying theme that it's only happening to Americans and that the current administration is to blame for all of this. There's just a whole lot of finger pointing going on. And all of that got me wondering, just how bad is inflation in the United States versus our new home country right here in Germany. So for this video, I'm going to split the analysis into two parts. First, I'll provide a bit of a statistical overview. Where are consumers seeing the least bang for their buck these days? Is it in Germany or in the USA? And what's driving the increased cost of living in each country? And second, since Jonathan and I just spent the last two weeks stateside, we also took the opportunity to conduct a little experiment. We have already made a grocery store experience video comparing the US and Germany, but many of you naturally asked, what kind of differences are there in the cost of food? So today I'm here to answer that very question. We purchased a few staple items most families get on a weekly basis, both in the United States and here in Germany to give you a personalized look at what inflation looks like for everyday people in both countries. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, while inflation certainly hurts us right here in the here and now, the reality of it is that the economic mechanisms that put this turmoil into place well, they're global and they started quite a while ago. Global inflation was generally moderating when the pandemic began and the downward trend continue into the early months of the crisis. But surging prices since late 2020 have pushed inflation steadily higher. The average global cost of living has risen more in the 18 months since the start of 2021 than it did during the preceding five years combined. And this chart from the International Monetary Fund shows that food and energy are the main drivers of this inflation. Since the start of last year, the average contributions just from food exceed the overall average rate of inflation during 2016 through 2020. In other words, food inflation alone has eroded global living standards at the same rate as overall inflation of all consumption did in the five years immediately before the pandemic. And a similar story holds for energy costs, which show up both directly and indirectly through higher transportation costs. And that's not to say that the prices of other things aren't increasing too. For example, the prices of things in the service industry are increasing in both the United States and in the European Union. But it is important to note here that the relative price of food, energy, and other items, well, these drivers are all contributing to inflation, but not necessarily in the same way in every country. For example, while we have seen significant increases in the price of food here in Germany, the increase in cost of energy has been brutal and really isn't even a good comparison to the cost of energy in the United States. For obvious reasons, we're paying more here for our energy in Germany, a lot more. In fact, we just moved into our new house this summer and had to start up with a new energy provider. And between the war in Ukraine and the shutdown of the Nord Stream pipeline, we pay a whopping 57.72 cents per kilowatt hour for energy right now. 
In contrast, the average price per kilowatt hour in the US is 16.6 cents. In other words, we pay about three and a half times the cost for energy. Okay, I think that's enough of the breakdown of inflation for now. I just kind of wanted to provide some context here before we jump into the meat of this video. And like I mentioned in the introduction, we want to show what that inflation is like for everyday families in kind of a real world lived experience. However, as you can imagine with any comparison, we're going to have to lay down a few ground rules for this comparison first. For starters, I recognize that there are a lot of variables that change the price you pay at the checkout counter. For example, in the United States, sales tax is variable depending on where you live, but you'll also see big differences in price from one grocery store to another and price differences between brands. And I know I couldn't possibly account for all of those differences, but I do think this is really an important exercise to conduct because it at least gives just a snapshot into what the cost of living, specifically the cost of groceries, are like for Americans and Germans. So here's the rules that I set out for myself before I even went inside the grocery store. First, we chose to shop at what we feel is a mid-range grocery store. It's not a discount grocer like Aldi, but it's also not going to be a really expensive high-end grocery store like Whole Foods. For this comparison, we chose to shop at the Hen House Grocery Store in Overland Park, Kansas, and the Reve Grocery Store in the Freiburg area. Second, I also completely understand that brand names can really increase the price you pay at the checkout counter. So for this comparison, I really tried to hit the middle of the road. Not bio or organic, but also not necessarily what's just the cheapest brand on the shelf. I was hitting for middle of the road, usually a low cost brand name item when available. Third, I also understand that while it's not completely one-to-one, -one, the US dollar and the Euro are very similar, but this does change on a day-to-day -day basis. So for this comparison, I used a conversion rate at the date of recording, which is Tuesday, December 6th. And for US prices, I used a combined sales tax rate of 9.6% for Overland Park, Kansas. And I'm going to include those in the prices as shown. And for our American audience, VAT or value added tax is already included in the price of shelf items in Germany, and that's 19%. Also, last but not least, there is also going to be naturally some differences in the scale of the items and the quantity of the items sold between the US and Germany, because the USA decided to be one of those countries that wanted just to be a little bit more difficult and not adhere to the metric system. So on your screen during this video, I'm not only going to show the shelf price, but I will also do my best to show the unit price and when possible, convert to a common denominator or to the EU metric equivalent when possible. Okay, whew, that was a lot. <laughs> so enough of the jabber, let's get down to this comparison. All right, first up, the cost of a loaf of bread. In Germany, one loaf of whole wheat bread costs one euro and 69 cents. Also, two quick important things. Uh, one, yes, I know that this is sort of doing a disservice to the beautiful bakery bread, but we don't have that as readily available in the United States. So I went with this shelf option because, well, I'm trying to compare apples to apples or in this case, loaf to loaf. Also, the yellow sticker that you see at the price below the loaf of bread is actually indicating that this is a sale price at Reve, although they don't actually tell us what was the original retail price, so I don't really know how much savings I'm actually getting. Now, on the flip side of things, in the United States, one loaf of Sara Lee wheat bread cost us $4.46 with tax. Now, this is a sale price. It was advertised at $4.09, regularly for $49. Unfortunately, they don't tell me whether or not American or German loaves of bread come with the same amount of slices, and weight isn't a great indicator because different bread ingredients weigh differently. However, converting dollars to euros and vice versa, as you see on your screen, it's clear that even if there were minor differences, the shelf wheat bread in Germany is cheaper by a long shot. 
So for round one, we're going to give the point here to Germany for the lowest cost item. Next up are eggs. In Germany, a carton of 10 large eggs, the largest size they offer, cost three euros and 29 cents. On the flip side of things, in the United States, a dozen or 12 of Highland's best extra large eggs cost us $4.57 with tax. This was on sale originally $4.49 for a dozen on sale for $4.19 plus tax. Now, because we have a difference in quantity here, I'm going to break this down into the price per egg. Now, if we convert dollar to euro and vice versa, as you see on your screen, you're still going to get a better deal in Germany. And I should mention, I have zero idea if a German large egg is the same as an American extra large egg, or if the extra large is actually bigger and somehow there's some international system for the measurement of eggs that I'm just not aware of. I picked the biggest eggs I could find. I'm doing the best I can over here. But in terms of cost, I should give this point once again to Germany. Next up is milk. In Germany, one liter of Schwarzwaldmilch retails for one euro and 69 cents. In the US, a half gallon of Highland milk retails for 3.09 or $3.37 with tax. And once again, there's a difference in the scale or quantity here because of that pesky American imperial system. So after some mathematics and a few curse words aimed at whomever imposed the imperial system on the United States, what you see on your screen is a breakdown with monetary conversions from USD to Euro. And guys, this comes out to a difference of one cent between the two milks, which I find pretty incredible. You just check the exchange rate on another day and maybe the other will be ahead of the other. So in this category, I actually think we should just call it a tie. At least the two milks that I purchased happen to be remarkably nearly the exact same price. Next up is yogurt. In Germany, a 200 gram cup of Weihenstephan yogurt retails for 65 cents. In the US, on the flip side of things, a 5.3 ounce cup of Anderson Erickson dairy yogurt retails for 95 cents or $1.03 with tax. And you know the drill, more math, more cursing, and it ends up with a conversion that looks a lot like what you see on your screen. If we equalize both to a price for 100 grams, essentially American yogurt was double the cost. So once again, point Germany. Next up, bananas. In Germany, we purchased four bananas, or 0.686 kilograms worth, for one euro and nine cents. For reference, bananas were being sold at our store for one euro and 59 cents per kilogram. In the US, four bananas as well, or 1.58 pounds to be exact, cost us $1.17 with tax. For reference, bananas were selling at this grocery store in the United States for 68 cents per pound. So if we convert to kilograms and look at the exchanged cost, what you see on your screen shows that although a small difference does exist, US bananas in this experiment were in fact cheaper, even with the German bananas being on sale. So for a little change of pace, we're actually going to give this point to the US for having the cheaper item. Next up, ground beef. In Germany, 500 grams of 80-20 beef cost us three euros and 49 cents. In the US, it's important to note that beef is weighed and packaged at the store. So we were able to purchase 1.07 pounds of the same 80-20 ground beef at an extraordinary sale price of just $2.99 per pound. Regularly, $6.29 per pound. So for the amount we purchased with tax, we paid just $3.49. Now converted to grams and with the exchange rate, if we were simply just to compare the cost per 100 grams, you're going to see this breakdown here. And this one. <laughs> This one, I, I'm personally really, really, really torn on on how to give the points here. Because yes, technically speaking, the United States, it wins. It was, it was cheaper. 
but this was an extraordinary sales price. And if we were just going to look at the regular cost of that 80-20 ground beef, the price we pay in Germany is nowhere close. It is so vastly cheaper, but, but you know, I guess to be fair, we're looking at the prices advertised. So, uh, I, I don't know. I think for my conscience, I have to call this a tie because it is so close. And given that normally it's significantly more expensive, it just feels, uh, yeah, I don't know. You, you can make that call for yourself too. <laughs> Let me know what you think, by the way, down in the comment section on whether or not this should be a tie or how I should give this point. All right, and last but not least, let's take a look at chicken breasts. In Germany, we purchased 0.489 grams of chicken breast. Uh, those were two breasts to be exact, and they came out to, to four euros and 84 cents. Um, Reve again does indicate that this is a sale price with a price of nine euros and 90 cents per kilogram. On the flip side of things in the US, 1.09 pounds of chicken breasts, again, two chicken breasts, uh, retails for $8.19 per pound. So, you know, ours was a little bit over and once you add on tax, we actually paid $9.74 for those two chicken breasts. So again, if we convert this to kilograms with the exchange rate given, you're gonna see the price allocation that you see on the screen. Now here's the thing, Reve does tell us that the chicken breast was on sale in Germany they don't tell us what the normal price of it is. So I tried to do my due diligence and I researched and I Googled to see what chicken breast was selling at at different grocery stores. And essentially what I found is that the quote unquote savings that Reve was passing on wasn't really all that remarkable. The prices were a little bit higher at Etika, for example, but Again, not this like extraordinary sort of like half price deal like we saw on US beef prices. So in this category, even though it is on sale, I do feel a heck of a lot more comfortable giving the points to Germany for the win. Okay, so putting aside the fact that there are differences in quantities of how things are sold and all of that, if you were simply just interested on what the total cost was for this entire grocery store haul, well, in Germany, we spent 16 euros and 74 cents versus the United States where we spent $27 and 84 cents for our groceries. Now, as I mentioned earlier before, Overland Park, Kansas has a combined sales tax rate of 9.6%. Combined sales tax rates vary completely depending on where you are in the US, but Overland Park is kind of somewhere in the middle for reference. But you know, on the flip side of things, all of the items that we purchased here in Germany are subject to value added tax of 19%, more than double the tax that we paid on those items in the United States. So again, I just sort of feel like that goes to underscore that, gosh, if you took taxes out of it, the cost of food in Germany would be even that much lower. So again, I know this is just sort of one small snapshot into one grocery store experience from our point of view, but for me, it's really telling. Okay guys, so here's the thing. While Jonathan and I were in the US, we shopped in Missouri, Illinois, Texas, and Kansas. And 1000%, whether we were shopping at a grocery store or at Target, I felt like every time we left the store, Jonathan and I would look at each other and be like, how in the heck did that cost $200? It was like there was a $200 minimum, no matter where we went, everything was $200. It was, it was kind of crazy. And that really is sort of what led us to want to make this video in the first place. We just couldn't believe the cost of groceries and it really just sort of like, had us in this position of wondering, wait, how much are we paying in Germany? And is it is it a better deal? Like, I feel like when I first came to Germany, I once thought that groceries were actually more expensive here. But I guess after this experiment, it, it really kind of threw me through a loop. And it is actually especially interesting when I came back and started to look at more research because at least our experience 
doesn't necessarily match up with what the nationally reported data is telling us. According to DeStatus, the cost of food in Germany has increased 20.3% in October of 22 over the same month in the previous year. In contrast, the cost of food in the United States increased at a slower rate of 10.9% over a year ago in October of 2021 easing further from 11.2% rise in the previous month. So either German groceries are just all the more affordable, even including the increase in inflation, or we just need to do more shopping and do more comparisons to really look at the prices. Cause yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty shocking for us. But you know, that actually leads me to the final question that I would like to ask you down in the comment section below based on what you saw today from our shopping experiences, are the groceries that you buy in your hometown more expensive, less expensive? I mean, how does it sort of compare to what we saw? I think we have a really lovely international audience and it would be really cool to sort of compare our receipts in the comment section and talk about the cost of food around the globe. Because again, inflation is global and it's hitting all of us pretty hard in our pocketbooks. But also, if you enjoyed this video on inflation and you want to hear more about how inflation is affecting other cost of goods like energy or housing, if, if you want me to make this a series, I'm more than happy to put in the research. So let me know down below what you think or if you have any recommendations for further videos on this subject that you would like to learn more about. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So until next time, cheers.